All right, so we can move on for our second speaker, um, co-founder and general manager of the Grameen Creative Lab. Hans Reitz has been Professor Yunus' creative advisor for the last 10 years. Driven by the quest for experience and change, Hans spent seven years living in a simple life in India before he founded a successful event agency which serves most of the German global corporations and he's also used his creative skills and mindset to involve companies and other players in the social business movement. Each year, he organizes the Global Social Business Summit, where the global social business community gathers to advance this important movement. So please join me in welcoming Hans Reitz. It's all about others, nothing about me. That I'm calling social business. Business to do good to people, do good to the planet, without any intention of financially benefiting out of it. We have all the knowledge what we need. We have all the technology. Jump start, don't wait too long, don't think too hard. So that's what the spirit of social business is all about. We're applauding them who has done a little bit, because that will open up the whole gate for a huge big thing. I would like to say it starts with people. So it starts with all of you in this room. I think this is a good time to take the frontier to the next step. We have selfishness in us, but at the same time we have selflessness in, in us. Why don't we create business out of the selflessness? More than 100 companies will be represented, 20 universities all over the world, and a lot of young spirit. We've got to teach problem solving, creative thinking, entrepreneurialism. This is not a charity, this is something where we can help other people that they could manage their life and they could get value in what they're doing and seeing the reason why they're here, not just begging or getting money from others. You cannot sit in New York and give a check of five million dollars and say, hey, I'm eradicating poverty. You're going to see that there is no choice but social business. We can change a lot of things with a small idea. Hi, my name is Meva. I come from Paris. Colombia. Algeria. I feel caring about the future. More than 5 billion people don't have any social protection. That is not their future. It's our future. My dream for the world, and that's the thing in which I'm going to work in the next years, is that every kid that is born in the world has the opportunity as any other kid in the world and to become who they want to be. This is Felipe from Peru. How are you? Put all your knowledge, all your heart, all your passion on the table together. 19.7 million jobs created by all participants in this room. Social business is somehow a concept, but it doesn't really fit into any box yet. The boxes don't exist because it's so new, it's so radical. We can do it. We just have to think about how we do it intelligently. The Yunus Center delegation, all our friends from Bangladesh, How can I do my part in life? Am I good as a person? How can I convince the people around me that tomorrow's too late? Many new members join in the family because we start believing uh, that there is a very good chance that we can really make an impact in the world. 
We have so many problems in the world. Malaysia is a wonderful place. But even in, in Malaysia, there are cracks in our society. We can take the risk now of going to our shareholders and bring funds and capabilities around a big game changer. We have all the resource and we have a lot of young people yeah. very enthusiastic about uh, changing the world. We are people who need people, you know, we are born to, to, to be together. And I hope that this social business summit here will plant the seed of a quiet revolution. If this can happen in Bangladesh, this can happen in any country. Today, the big challenges in the world cannot be solved by business or by government or by civil society alone. I wish you a very fruitful time. This is our sixth summit, and each summit we look for something new, something bold, something concrete. How do we balance the capital economy and the people economy? Because by definition, innovation actually disperses jobs. There is growth, but how inclusive is this growth? And this is obviously something which is true in many countries in the world. The responsibility of the company doesn't stop at the gates of the factory. It actually goes beyond. Today, we're creating a fund that will only invest in social businesses. One thing that attracted me and pained me is about the forest. Haiti lost all its forest. Why don't we create a social business to reforest Haiti? The cycle starts with us training the single mothers, as I mentioned. We have to make them feel that, okay, I can go out and I can be an entrepreneur as well. We have a new generation of young challengers, desperate to make social business become a reality all around the world. Zero poverty, zero unemployment, zero net carbon emission. Thank you to invite me uh, to Montreal. It's a great honor to be here in the city. Uh, the first time I was here in Montreal in 95, I was a talent scout for Cirque du Soleil uh, for more than three years, bringing the best artists uh, to the Cirque. So when, we, when I meet Professor Yunus uh, 2008, uh, I was running 14 years in my agency, setting up a difference bunch of companies, small companies, about a dozen, twelve. And uh, when I hear the framework about social business, when I hear the framework, what's going on, I was so excited. Uh, then I say I have to give a closer look. And it is what education is all about. I did a self-experiment and I not read books. I didn't read articles in the newspaper. I asked Professor Yunus if I can come to Bangladesh and have a 
my own impression and my own look to it. And uh, of course, I saw the Peace Nobel Prize. I saw the enormous awareness about the Grameen family and the Grameen achievement. But I could have not a clue about it, what is really behind. So my first time I arrived in Bangladesh in 2008. Um, and I uh, was taken, like many other people, to went out in the villages, see the daily work of the people in the Grameen Bank, these the organizations around Grameen Bank and the whole, what I call, what we call the Grameen family. Sometimes I call it the Grameen Gushti, the Grameen tribe uh, to be together. And uh, I compare it to the huge mega organization who I was the most important creative consultant. You know, I was very successful at this time. I'm leading every creative ranking in Germany in the live communication. I was the consultant about creativity. And uh, uh, the top companies in Germany, I took care about the top leadership uh, forums, about the way they behave, about the mission and the vision statements, and about uh, the top decisions, what they have to do. So I compared it to the mega organization, people, organizations over 100,000 people, great companies like BMW or like BSF or others. And I compare it to the organization in Bangladesh. And then I saw it, okay, there is an impact, of course, on the most dominant institutions of our time, the corporate people, or the corporates, uh, as we all are somehow connected, if we want or not want, but we are connected. Even if we doesn't like to be connected, we are connected. And then I saw the total difference mindset and the total difference uh, aspect, uh, uh, why they are doing it, you know? Why are you doing this? Why you take all this effort, all this organization, all this stuff, why are you doing it? And as more I'm asking why you're doing it, I saw it something as like, okay, this selfless aspect, what Lamia just talked about it, is something where I called afterwards and I tried to explain it to my brothers and I tried to explain it to my family and to my employees and to my clients. I called it creative responsible. And at this moment, of course, um, uh, Professor Yunus had a good income as a teacher, as a professor, you know. He had not to take care about anybody else, you know. He, he did it for himself. But to be creative, responsible, it means not only to be responsible for your own, to be responsible for you as well, you know, and to take care more than only about your own income. The creative responsibility is an opportunity in all of us to say, if we are in a position where we are not sick, where we are not having a, a huge uh, health trouble, then we are here to take care about each other. I didn't know any organization around the globe who have a, such a great attitude like the guys in Bangladesh. And then I observe it. I say, okay, comparing to Germany, the Bangladeshi, the government, you know, comparing to Germany, it's a really tough government, and it's not what we expected under a government who serves the society. The law is very difficult. Corruption is one of the highest in the whole world. And then also the natural challenge, the pure natural challenge in Bangladesh is so high and so dramatic. And, but all these people in, around the social business movement I really don't give up. They're highly connected. They're extremely happy to each other. And then I say, oh, why we should go to Bangladesh to say, oh, may I can help these people. I definitely understand after my first journey, oh, I can learn something to solve my most social pressing needs around my community, around my cities, and around my stuff. So, and then I went back after my first journey, and I talked to our mayor in the city of Wiesbaden, who's a, uh, capital city of the state Hessen, you know, so it's close to Frankfurt, so Frankfurt is not the capital city, it's Wiesbaden. And I talked to the mayor, can we create something like a social business city where the city, the community of the citizen, are having an aim to say social business is our attitude, our way to behave, is our vision, is our mission to go. And thanks to, to Dr. Müller, who was the mayor at this time, he said, I love this idea, let's create the first social business city. So we brought together the university, the main newspaper, some NGOs, some entrepreneurs, some stuff, and since 
around seven, eight years, we promoting social business in our city. We started very small, changing one street. You know, we took one street where we see a lot of uh, integration work have to be done, where we see a lot of injustice in our society, and we say first we change a, a, a street in the city, and then a district, and then it goes through the whole city. After 10 years now, or not, not even 10 years, eight, nine years, you can go through the city and you can see, oh, this is done by the social business city movement, this is done by the social business movement. Slowly, you see a change in our city. And um, I see it now in a lot of other people who live in the city have the same wish to be more connected in the city, you know? We have more relation between each other and then see who you are, what are you doing, what's your story all about? Or what's your story? What's your story? How is your life? What's your next baby? You know, what's going on? So having a real deeply relation again, or at least a relation in a city. So with the social business city movement, we really achieved something in the city of Wiesbaden, and we inspired a lot of other citizens in other cities to try to think, oh, can I start something in my city? Can I do something next to me? You know? And um, this is something what I would really uh, share today to see uh, on the creative responsibility side. Uh, every one of us has the capability, if he's not in dramatic need, then he can take care about somebody who is next to him. And social business is a beautiful tool to make this with roles and responsibility, with management, you know, with a clear structure, with a clear framework, with a, with a good uh, sustainable way in an economic sense, you know. So uh, this makes a lot of sense to us in Wiesbaden. And I know now is watching around a couple of nearly 100 people here, but there's a couple of 100 people out on Facebook. So maybe if you read or if you listen later to Professor Yunus, you also can ask your questions later to Professor Yunus via Facebook. It would be a nice experience when he follows the speech afterwards. I just want to give this message to the Facebook community. And thanks for watching it. I just saw was over 700 people watching the event with us uh, now at the moment. So the aspect about uh, being on a global scale, trying to be a global citizen, to see we are all somehow connected today. You know, we are eight, nearly 8 billion people now. We will be sooner or later 9 billion people. By the way, it will be 2 billion children, 5 grown-ups. It will be keeping 2 billion children, but 6 growing-ups. It will be still 2 billion children, 7 grown-ups. So it means we are on an historical moment of humankind and we know where our children will be born. We know we will have in five years, the children will be born in Africa, the children will be born in Europe. We know exactly by database where the children are, can be born. So we can all take care about the next childhood, about the next 16 years. And the creative responsible aspect is about this. I'm not responsible only about my children. I have four. I'm lucky to have four children. But I don't care, is it my gene or is it the other genes? It's children. And we are here to take care of our children. For the first time in history of humankind, we know where the children will be born. And we will be seven grown up for two children. And I think this should be possible. Then not a single child get murdered by an system. You know, last night, and I quote now my Minister of Development in Germany last night, we, the system killed, murdered 30,000 children again. Just with, the system doesn't take care. Unnecessary because we have enough knowledge, we have enough food, we have enough technology, we took enough out of the ground of oil and of, of resources, enough gold, enough stuff who is on the planet. We, have, we produce 1,600 times more money every year as we need. It's just not in the right balance. And this is well, it's me as a family man uh, uh, getting so excited about social business because, of course, my attitude is to taking care about my family and about the, the friends of my family and the friends of my children. And social business gives me enormous uh, motivation to say, this is the way how we can have a better balance between rich and poor, between privileged and underprivileged, and see us as human to human. 
And if we once start this counterculture of social business, this radical sense of saying zero dividend, non-loss, non-dividend company, redesign business in a way like it was not done before in a, such a radical sense. Zero dividend is a radical idea. It's like being vegan for the most uh, people on the finance sector. Say, hey, okay, let's have a radical change. We need to, we need to heal us. We need to do something like this. And of course, this counterculture to demonstrate this, yes, I can do business. As a businessman, I pay myself, even I'm in the working a salary like everybody else, you know, but the rest of the money I reinvest to solve the problem. So we did a lot of achievements in the social business movement, and I can tell you it makes a lot of joy, it makes a lot of sense. My lesson learned was it takes a little bit longer than we imagine. It's like you're planting a, a walnut tree, and uh, you, can, you, know, you can dance around, you can jump around, but it takes you a while, and this walnut tree gives you nuts. But once, if it's fruitful, then this, you have a seed for a whole forest. And the same is for social business. If you once incubate your idea, your stuff to say, oh, I want to do something for single mothers. I want to do something for elderly people above 75. I want to do something for children in need. If you're once setting the seeds of social business, you, with your idea, with your passion, you create this seed. And we're always delighted to help you to creating this seed and being, being your seed creator together in all our events and in all our stuff. And then you're planting these seeds and you take care about these seeds. You will see these seeds, if you start small, if you take care about it, these seeds will have the potential to have a whole forest in it, a whole ecosystem. And that's what we did in the last 10 years. And Joseph is here. Uh, he was uh, with us on the last uh, Berlin event. And we did something what we call the Refugee Action Tank. And I just want to share this with you because we don't do just another event by mind blowing you on one or two days. It makes a really impact. But maybe Joseph, you explain a little bit what was your experience in with the Refugee Action Tank because it was nice and you uh, welcomed me when I come in. I didn't know that you're here, but uh, share a little bit about your experience in Berlin. So, on? I'm not uh, sure. It's on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so it was really interesting because I had the chance to participate at the uh, conference in Berlin in 2015. And uh, it was really, you know, in the period of the refugee crisis, uh, especially in Germany. And so uh, there was this kind of like integrated event where it was the refugee action tank where, you know, we got together with refugees uh, who had just arrived uh, in Berlin and kind of very simply brainstorm around, well, first of all, to understand what were their needs, what was going on, the situation uh, for them in Berlin, in Germany as a whole, um, and then try to just kind of brainstorm around, you know, what could be done to kind of facilitate that integration. So it was very interesting to see that, well, for me as an experience to, to be able to, to be part of this process, um, it was kind of, you know, a, a bit somewhere between something structured, but at the same time very kind of also improvised, right? Because everybody was kind of doing this for the first time. And so the exchanges were very interesting, but at the end, we, you know, of course, you're not always sure to what extent, you know, this kind of work is going to have an actual impact. And uh, so the network was kind of put in place and, and kept in touch. And it's very interesting to see that about a year and a half later, uh, several of those kind of projects that were first brainstormed uh, during that process actually, you know, took shape and are having a concrete impact. Uh, like, for example, uh, Singa Germany. Uh, I think there was even there is even Singa Quebec that was established also uh, around the same time, yeah. doing a lot of work with, with refugees. And also, very interestingly, I had the chance to meet um, a, um, a gentleman from Syria who had just arrived, and myself, I was born and raised in Lebanon, so I had the chance to, to, to exchange with him. And kind of seeing his integration, you know, staying in touch and seeing his integration, how it's happened, uh, is really kind of honestly uh, inspiring in the sense that you see that it can be done in a way that, uh, you know, really creates value for both the people arriving and for the host country at the same time. And so it was really inspiring to see the dynamic that was created. Uh, and, and then also, you know, the concrete impact. So um, I think it's something that needs to be kind of also replicated. Uh, I know I've had the chance to discuss with some professors here at HEC how 
we can, you know, contribute to this type of, of work with refugees. So, yeah, yeah. thanks for that. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. That's exactly what I want to share. We did this event, and now we have a university do their research about the last 10 years, and we have the first results, and we are more than surprised. How many impacts? Hundreds of companies. In Vienna, where we did it two years, today they say over 500 companies was founded in the city out of the events. So the energy when you come together and you put on your empathy, your compassion, your way into the business community, then it makes an enormous impact. So you can follow and you can trust your wish, your dream, your emotion, your aspects to say, I want to really make something for other people. If you be connected with the right people, if you're having a right framework, then things will bring results. And that's why we invited you to come to Paris, to be part of the Global Social Business Summit. If you can't make it personally, you can, we will have all effort and you are, can do it from Montreal and you can do it on the website. But of course, it's always much more deeper if you come to Paris. We will try to develop now more and more deeper with RGC Montreal to have a real North American Social Business Forum where we have the same two days events where we try to get financed now for the promotion and where we get the right uh, resources done and we have next year a great North American social forum and, uh, and to, to do this stuff because it starts with a relation by a new people, it starts with new co-creation, new co-working and my message to you all is it makes absolutely sense and believe me you can make it and you can make it more as you are imagined today and if you start next door, if you start with your next neighbor, if you start small and you really follow your heart, the framework of social business will give you the right fruits if you're setting the seed in the right way. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Hans. Um, time for some questions, please. Yeah, we have Joey here. Thanks for this, Hans. Um, okay, so I just wanted to kind of get your perspective on something that you know I kind of struggle sometimes with, and you know, seeing the the, the vision of the three zeros, which is quite a radical vision to achieve these these three zeros, um, and s some would make the case that. You know, in a sense, it's impossible to achieve these three zeros, uh, you know, in this kind of growth perspective of the economy. Um, that if we, you know, like, in the sense that a growth economy is built on social and environmental inequalities. So, in trying to achieve this vision of three zeros, how do you see the social business movement kind of, uh, you know, managing, in a sense, this tension with the private sector that may still be very much in that inclusive growth, right? But still the growth aspect is there. So then you wonder, okay, so to which extent can we achieve those three zeros? And so that's kind of like the first part to the question. And, and then in a sense, there is a lot of civil society movements that are kind of really uh, in a sense flipping around this economic growth. And so again, you know, what kind of um, collaboration with this, this type of citizen movements for social business? Like how do they reinforce or, or maybe not? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so kind of, yeah, a bit your perspective on this uh, aspect. Yeah. yeah, I can. So thanks to the social business aspect, we can have a completely open mind. I just uh, uh, four days ago, I had a meeting with the top tourist guy from the city of Berlin. We are a post meeting after the summit in Berlin. And then we say, okay, what's at this triple zero, the zero carbon emission? And we just had an idea, totally radical, and this is what we call creative responsible. We say the boats in Berlin who are carrying tourists in the future does not have to be zero emission, they have to be positive. That means they have to, during the taking the tourists around, they have to clean up the air and they have to clean up the water. Then we can go back in the spray to swim. So we are now going and designing as a social business these new boats. The boats are positive. That means the boats, for example, are 
cleaning up the water, cleaning up the air during the showing people around Berlin. And then you have to see, because not everyone will have a swift like this. There will be still running the humor and some different uh, diesel aggregates in, in Berlin because we live in a free society, but we can start with a radical new idea. And the zero, uh, car, uh, the zero carbon emission, for example, I talked a lot to BMW this year, say, your cars not only going around have zero emission, your car should go around and clean up the air. Ask your designer to do so. This is not enough in the future to just be neutral. I think we have to be positive. And this is, some of us have to be entrepreneurial, cross borders, and be positive, then other follows to become by zero. That's what, it's my opinion about it. So be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> dream of it. And then, you know, dream of a bank for poor. Nobody was creating a bank for poor. Then suddenly it's, I think it was not even planned, but it was happened because it was the need of the people. So in this way, we can dream of. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, please. Good morning. First of all, thank you for your presentation. Uh, recently, I saw this documentary called Poverty Inc., which I don't know if you have seen it, but basically it, it made a critique on the international development movement on how philanthropy and free money, you know, and charity is threatening a social movement or social business in, in, in the communities that they try to help. So, so how do you work with, for example, international NGOs or, or, or international development institutions in trying to avoid pouring free money and charity money that threatens, you know, social entrepreneurs or social movements and, and create social business that ultimately will help these communities? Yeah. Thank you. My way is always try to give an example, you know? The best way is to commit meet people to, to, to make an example. As, in a, and there's more great example we have, as bad it is. So we are lucky because if we make an effort, we can go to Bangladesh and we can see many examples. So this is why we created the social business movement. This is why we created all the implementation with YSP. For me, the best teacher is an example. The best, the best noise make it happen. We have one social business in Frankfurt Airport, for example, where we have a, a creative responsible farming in India, where we produce a lot of local food, where we produce a, a great environment for elephants and tigers on the, on, the, on the natural reserves. But we also have some coffee, and so we sell the coffee on Frankfurt Airport in one of the most outstanding coffee shops. It's not about making coffee business, it's about in, to creating a new forest where we can protect the animals and where we have a good livelihood and where we have a local income for the people, farmers in India. But the best example is, of course, we have some coffee fruits in the jungle. We pick the jungle, we, we deliver it very delicious. We build one of the most fancy coffee shops and uh, we are still positive on all our impact. So examples, 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 examples. And again, examples. This is how we try to inspire people. I, I, I think it's not to convince people, but uh, to inspire. And then it's their choice uh, to do or to not do. And uh, inspiration is a good, uh, uh, a good tool to promote, yeah. Good, thank you. Thank you very much, Hans. Thank you.